the need to move money from place to place, the cost of doing so, the overhead, as you put it, makes me think, believe it or not, of Bitcoin, because some people have said, hey, Bitcoin is the answer to those problems. Are you a believer? Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And, of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. The customers we're talking about aren't trying to be anonymous. You know, they're willing to be uh, known. So it, it, the Bitcoin technology is key, and you could add to it or you could build a similar technology uh, where there's enough attribution that people feel comfortable. This has nothing to do with uh, terrorism or uh, any type of, of money laundering. So what does Buffett not like right now? That would be Bitcoin. He says that Bitcoin right now looks, looks a little bit tulip-like to him. It's not a currency. I mean, it, it, you know, it, 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 it does not meet the test of a currency. It, 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 uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 or 20 years. Why does it not meet the definition of a currency? Well, because people say, well, I'll sell you goods in bitcoins, but they change the price of those every time the price of the dollar changes in relation to the bitcoin. They're pricing off the dollar. They could say, well, I'll sell it to you in barrels of oil. But if they ch every time the price of oil changes, they change the number of barrels you have to have. That's not, your, your oil is not the currency. The other technology breaks Orwell's dictum. It breaks Orwell's dictum by providing proof of publishing at a certain time. And that is the intellectual underpinning of that whole system and can be used for lots and lots of other things. And so that's the big expansion we're about to see uh, in Bitcoin, all derived from this basic premise that you can prove that a particular statement, a particular consensus, a particular contract happened at a particular time globally, uh, and it requires the subversion of every single jurisdiction where people are running Bitcoin to overturn that. Am I right in understanding that you're saying that the Bitcoin architecture has applications far beyond the economic role that Bitcoin can play, and that that architecture is very strengthening to the life of information in the digital space, ma making it less vulnerable to the kind of mischief you talked about in Russia or elsewhere. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. That underlying architecture can be used uh, for publishers, for example, uh, so that, um, as an example, we are starting to use Bitcoin, WikiLeaks, uh, stuffing our um, cryptographic keys of stuff that we publish. So we prove that we have published stuff at a particular time uh, by stuffing it in Bitcoin, in the blockchain. And then if someone were to come and try and modify the material that we have published to take out particular parts, that would be detectable. Do you think Bitcoin will be disruptive in that way? I mean, we now it's a speculative currency. Will it be something that will be what normal consumers will use and will disrupt the banking industry? My opinion of Bitcoin is that, uh, I, I mean, I think Bitcoin is probably a good thing, um, but it's, it's essentially, uh, it, it, its main thing, thing will be, I mean, this will probably get quoted here and there, but the, it, it, it's, it, it's, I think it's primarily going to be a means of, of doing illegal transactions. <laughs> um, but that's not necessarily entirely bad because, you, know, <laughs> you know, some things should be, maybe shouldn't be illegal. Uh, so, um, but the combination of Silk Road and Bitcoin will save us. Well, it, it will be useful for legal and illegal transactions. Otherwise, it would have no value as a use of for for legal transactions because you have to have a legal to illegal bridge. Yeah. Um, I don't own any Bitcoin. Well, yeah. right. of, in fact, uh, one can pay for a tour on Virgin Galactic up to the moon with Bitcoin. I think the, the Winklevoss twins have said that they would do exactly that. Do you think this is a currency, a currency that's really going to work eventually? Well, I think it is working. Um, and uh, there will be other currencies like it that may, may be even better. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a big industry around Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, people have made fortunes out of Bitcoin. Some people have lost money out of Bitcoin. Um, it's volatile. Hmm? It's volatile. 
Yeah, a bit. It is quite volatile, but um, but you know, when in volati volatility, people can make money <laughs> out of volatile situations. Why was it important for you to give it sort of that stamp of approval, that endorsement, by saying to the Winklevoss twins, "Yes, you can pay for the uh, the ride with Bitcoin." Because I'm not foolish. I mean, if, if people have got lots of bitcoins and they want to go to space, um, I'd much rather they um, spent that money on our spaceship. Whether I keep bit of bitcoins is another matter. <laughs> but I'd much rather they, they spent that money on, on a Virgin Galactic spaceship than on, uh, you know, Elon will be sending people to space one day on Elon's spaceship. So we'll, we'll grab the money while it's, while it's there. <laughs> Elon versus